Hello YouTube, it's Tony. So today, I will test the new Abyssal Demon Slayer dungeon. Yes, it has been released earlier today. Now, this is gonna be my very first look at this, so it's not gonna be the most accurate guide in like maybe two or three months or something like that. So anyways, I will be testing this with Melee. Here are the requirements. Well, first of all, you do need level 100 Dungeoneering. Yeah, sorry, if you don't have that, you cannot access this. Obviously, you do need 85 Slayer. In terms of levels, I am using a high level setup. It is located just right outside the Slayer Tower. You can get there directly by using the Dungeoneering Cape. Otherwise, Mask of the Abyss can teleport you there as well. Luckily, there are two spots for Abyssal Demons, which are Southeast and Southwest. Here is my equipment setup. I'm using a Noxious Scythe. You can otherwise use an Attune Crystal Halberd or a Dragon Rider Lance. Obviously, if you're on Slayer Tasks, then you want to bring a Slayer Helmet. In terms of armor, I'm not really bringing anything big. As a matter of fact, I'm using full bandos. You can also bring Demon Slayer armor, and it will give you more damage and extra XP against demons. For the armor perks, I would suggest Demon Slayer and Genocidal. Cinder Bane gloves will add you extra poison damage. After that, I have a Demon Horn necklace, and then I bring this with a 2 Nectoplasmator. This ensures that I do have unlimited prayer. Alternatively, if you don't want to spend money on Ghostly Essence, then you can use a Blood Amulet Fury instead. For the auras, I suggest either Penance or Vampirism. This is my inventory setup. I'll start with Aggression Potions. After that, you can bring either Holy or Supreme Overloads. If you're not using a 2 Nectoplasmator, a really good alternative would be the Infernal Urns. Basically, it will clean the Infernal Ash Drops for you. Yeah, so it's way cheaper compared to a 2 Nectoplasmator, but the real problem is that it won't trigger Demon Horn Necklace. After that, I have Gem Bag because they drop a lot of gems. You can also bring a Spring Cleaner, or otherwise you can bring Alcruns instead. For the familiar, I'm using a Legendary Pet in this case. Finally, you want to have Charming Imp in your tool belt, as well as the Advanced Gold Accumulator. Moving on, we have the strategy. I prefer the Eastern spot because there are way more clusters here. Compared to the western spot, it's actually a much much smaller map. This makes it really really ideal for aggression potion. For both of these spots, they do have 8 spawns each. Generally speaking, you can just afk for as long as you want. To be honest, I was even able to edit this guide while I was afking, so it just shows how much relaxing it really is. Once in a while, you do want to watch out for an abyssal demon elite spawn because they can hit pretty hard. Unfortunately for the abyssal demons, you cannot use a cannon. Now as for looting the drops, I like to use my legendary pet because they will loot most of the available drops. Some of the drops will be cleaned from spring cleaner anyways. You can pretty much area loot the rest of the drops. Now for the gem bag, unfortunately it will get full in less than 1 hour because they drop a lot of rubies here. For the prayers and the action bar, this is what I got. I have turmoil and soul split. You can easily use revolution plus plus. First, I have meteor strike. After that, I have Hurricane and Quake for Thresholds, and finally, the main basic you want to have is Cleave. For the rest of the basic abilities, you can just fill it with anything you want. I think you can also put Berserk here, but I don't really have enough adrenaline most of the time anyways. So in one hour, I was able to kill 1100 Abyssal Demons. Now, I do have a raw footage of this, and I will leave that link in the description. I got 720k melee XP per hour. Virtually, you can get around 300k Slayer XP per hour. I'm not sure about Slayer contracts, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't work here. Anyways, for Prayer XP per hour, that would be 73k from the Atun Ectoplasmator. I also got around 4.1 million GP per hour in drops. If you were to factor in the cost per hour from Springs and Atun Ectoplasmator, that would still get you 2.8 mil GP per hour profit. Since their drop rate is 33%, that means you'll get 350 Crimson Charms in a single hour. It also works with other combat styles as well, but I haven't tested this for an entire hour. So Tony, how does this compare to the Slayer Tower instead? I honestly think it's on par with Slayer Tower. Maybe it's a little bit slower than that, but I mean, at least you don't have to fight for a crowd because on release day, it was so much easier to find a spot compared to the Slayer Tower itself. So what about the Wilderness? Well, it's actually slower than the Wilderness because in the Wilderness, there are so many spawns there. Not to mention that you can use a cannon, 
and that means you can get at least 1 million combat XP per hour from this. Yeah, if you don't believe me, I do have a guide on this, and I will leave that link in the description. So before I end this video, I have a quick announcement. I know a lot of you guys are waiting for Discord server, but it's going to be officially released on March 31st. When I make the Loot from Parcels video, I will leave that link in the description, and I will also talk about my future plans. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope it helps. If I missed anything, feel free to ask. Also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already because I will definitely be doing more guides in the future.